Have you ever watched that on British TV? Someone eats too much cheese, for example, and then they put all the cheese on a big pie and go, that's how, how much cheese, cheese you eat. I want you to have a look at this. Wow, that's a lot of cheese. That is the equivalent. Might have a problem. You asked what guns I own and I was going to do a members video for this. However, I spoke to Tweedle, who have brought an amazing competition out that you will be very interested in, and we'll talk about that a bit later. It's interesting. All right, in no particular order, I mean, in obviously in a particular order, let's open with this. This, you all know this, this is a very well-documented gun, is my Longthorn. It is a Longthorn Valkyrie model. It is beautiful. It's got the Griptek stock. It's got lovely engraving, 32-inch barrels, multi-chokes with internal 3.8 and 3.8 fitted. Since having it, I put on a little bit of weight, so I chopped the stock down, took a little bit off the comb. Other than that, it's pretty much as it came from the factory, which is custom fitted. I love it. Let's have a few shots. What is the point in having custom molded ear protection when you forget it, you ask? None. I mean, we shouldn't be surprised that that shoots well, and I love it to bits. It is my main driver. Next, I've no idea what's in here. Let's have a look. Ta-da. Oh. So I should point out that most of these aren't in my cabinet. I keep most of them in a secure storage because who needs this many guns? This is a Woodward. We've seen this before. I am desperately in love with this gun. It is rancid, it's well pitted, it's rusty, it's sleeved, but it still has that Woodward top lever, that Woodward T-bar. And although it's sleeved, it's a good job. Still shoots like a Woodward. Well, why do I love this gun? Well, I couldn't afford a good Woodward but I can have this, and this is, to me at least, represents every bit just as good as a real one until I get there one day. This is my most recent addition to the collection, bar the one I just won in Holtz, but we'll not talk about that now. This is a Rottweil Montreal trap. I purchased this from that man there, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, a week ago. I, I'm not at a stage of regretting it yet. It is, um, I mean, those who know me will know how much joy that brings me. So. Uh, Let's shoot it. What a gun. I mean, it's a big, heavy trap gun. I love the step up rib. The differences in checkering across that is just a beautiful sight picture. Pierce top lever's lovely. Gold lines are lovely. Members have seen this before. How can you not fall in love with it? Even like this, it's so of its time, as Sasha would say. <laughs> this is a TGS gun. This is my TGS gun. It's a 32-inch fixed choke yield. It's branded TGS with a stock made to our specs. To be honest, this isn't the original stock. That is off at the moment. I just put a standard pro stock on there for today. Don't ask me why, long story. Either way, I absolutely adored shooting this gun from the tapered rib to that lightweight barrel distribution. They shot like demons. I should shoot it more, but I don't. Like the way that those barrels move, I remember why I fell in love with this gun. I mean, I designed it and spec'd it, so I should be happy with it. Subsequently, Yield It's basically released the same thing, but with multi-chokes, no disrespect, it's almost as good, but it was the fixed choke that made the way this gun shot and handled. This is my Longthorn game stock. It is currently attached to the first Longthorn, the demo action that I got from Longthorn to shoot whilst we were working on mine. They, very kindly, because it is one of the early actions, allowed me to keep it on long-term loan, so I don't have to change the stocks over between the two. I love it. It shoots very flat, so it's very different to the other one. Let's have a few shots. Mate, that is so flat. I've no idea how I used to shoot it the way I did. I guess I've just come on away since then. Let's open both eyes and just invoke a bit of 20. 20. Boom. Oh. It's certainly a little bit more gamey. I love it. I actually remember how easy this was to shoot. Effortless, in fact. You know, I don't see any rib, but it comes back so quickly how I used to shoot this gun. It is designed for game shooting, designed to flow through targets, and it takes no effort, no mental calculation to shoot it. Sorry, Sash. Hello, mate. You all right? Mate, I have been inundated with a request to put a Longthorn on the website as a competition. I mean, I obviously think that's a great idea, mate. Longthorns are some of the best guns of all time. A Vanguard, I think. Vanguard, that's the square back with the lovely scroll engraving. They've actually got one here, right? Um, we go see about Craig, see if he can supply you one. Yeah, absolutely. I've crunched some numbers and stuff. Same as the Krieg off that we did previously. 1,399 tickets at 20 pounds a ticket. 
Yeah, you see, I think that's a great idea, mate. People would love that. Let's go up a word with him. I'll have a word with Jim. See what we can sort out for you. Let's get it done. Cheers, Johnny. So this is her. This is it, yeah. The Vanguard. It's one of the most, I think, the most affordable Longthorns there is for a pretty gun. You get the very basic ones, which start at about 13. Then you jump up into this range, but the jump is quite dramatic. Yeah, a very pretty thing. Of course, come with a decent warranty and the Longthorn barrels. Yeah, which they're famous for. You know, making a barrel out of one piece of steel is... 27 kilos? Yeah, down that to 1,530 grams. Yeah. It's a feat of engineering in itself, isn't it? I think Jim is insane for doing it, but it's cool. Yeah. These trigger plates, they just shoot so well. Yeah, and it's, it's a very common mechanism now in guns, isn't it? It's bomb-proof reliability. Um, the beauty of these is, is everything is made in the UK. The whole lot. It's kind of nice, right? Yeah, of course it is. And just got off the phone with Jim. He's throwing in a exhibition grade piece of wood to whoever wants it. Yeah, which is a nice touch. Or whoever wins it, more importantly. Yeah. This is a Stephen Grant side lock ejector. It's not in the best of condition, but it is a beautiful, beautiful gun. I love the way it shoots and I own it for exactly the same reason as the Woodward. I can't afford a really good one, but I can afford one of these and this, oh, I mean, just look at the way, oh, just look at it. You can't help but love this gun. I don't even need to shoot it for this one to bring me joy. This gun is not a shooter for me. It is just a looker. This is a Beretta Silver Pigeon. Uh, it's a doggy old workhorse. It's a 28 inch game gun. I bought it because everyone has to have a Beretta, right? What is a man without a Silver Pigeon? I mean, they do come in worse conditions than this, but not regularly. Let's have a ED Simo, please. It's auto safety. Who even owns auto safety guns? It's a Parazzi MX-8. It's the only part that you should be interested in. No more words needed, they're a great, great gun. How I'd spend 1,500 quid? Like this. However, the Mara Ricardo does need a little bit more cast. A shame, so I don't really shoot it that much. It's not quite where I want it fit-wise, but these teak chokes are the most beautiful things. Uh, so I regularly just take it out and look at them. I say that about the fit, it actually fits perfectly adequately to shoot. The problem is it doesn't fit. It, it takes a little few shots just to remember. If this was my only gun, I'd probably shoot the absolute hell out of it. Can I have a C followed by a B please, sir? Love it, absolutely love it. I think the better title for this film, Sasha, would be I hope my wife, who we're not actually married, doesn't watch this. 100% there's gonna be some grass out there who tells her to watch it. And because we can, we're gonna take these off. Right, let's turn that back up and we're gonna do this. This is a hush power single shot built on a Pedretti fairly crap action. But uh, let's have that bee bird, please. We can take quietly. Pull. They're notoriously hard to shoot. They're very hard to shoot. Let's have that one last time and see if we can actually hit anything. I think I remember why I don't like this gun so much. Yeah, yeah that's what I remember. If you give it one shove because it's got basically no weight. In fact, the balance point is six inches in front of the hinge. It's not the most delightful gun to shoot. But once you get a few through it, a bit like the Science 410s, it's cool. I mean, ah, oh, we all remember this one. The Gamba Gold SP Holtz 5215. How can you not fall in love with this? The 400 pound mistake. <laughs> I mean, I might have issues, but uh, I'm okay with that. That last gun, FYI, if you put subsonic shells through, is basically like shooting an air gun. That, shooting with no ear defenders, is basically nothing as well. I remember with this gun, it's very easy to um, put in front of stuff. Where it's quite rear heavy, it's very easy to whack it out there. So rein it in, which is actually okay. I mean, this is probably one of the best value guns I've ever bought, and it's gold. To be honest, it took a little bit longer to get all these together than I thought. Oh yes. This is a Winchester 120 Ranger. I mean, let's be honest, they're a pretty average pump action. I did have a couple of these, I've sold a couple, because you only need one pump action, you don't shoot, not three. 
It's certainly one of the least nice guns I have and takes quite a bit of effort to shoot or at least put where you want it. But a few modifications, this could be a wonderful gun. As it is, I think every person should own a pump action and this is it. If you're wondering, by the way, why the TJS gun has those silver bits at the end of the barrels that we looked at earlier, well, that is because I might have put inappropriate loads through a 5 8 choke. But you live and learn. This is a Lambert. You have never seen a mintier Lambert than this. It's got, it comes in the original box. It is just tidy. What more could you possibly want? And again, we reference occasionally 17 year old me. 17 year old me would be proud and excited to have a mint Lambert. I paid decent money for this because I was inspired because it's a mint Lambert in a box. First time I've ever shot it. I, to be honest, was just intending to keep it in the case forever. I mean, that metal to metal fit leaves a bit to be desired. And in fact, looking at it with adult, more experienced eyes, they're not that wonderful, but it's still a good gun. <laughs> that does kick some. Yeah, you can uh, tell the slight difference in quality between that and the Longhorn. It's the cheapest gun on the internet. It took me a few seconds to remember. Here is your tool, sir. Uh, if you've watched this far in the video, uh, you will have noticed that, um, yeah, we got through the good stuff pretty early on. I mean, I flinched myself out of that shot. But hey, it is what it is. I mean, I'd raffle it off for charity, but who'd <laughs> buy it? All right, there you go. Actually, we're gonna take a step back up in quality. I really have no idea what's in the rest of these cases. I think I might actually have a problem. This is a Cosme. We've seen it before. We'll shoot it. I can't talk about it anymore, to be honest. You'll be sick of me and this gun. If this is the first video of ours you've watched, this is probably the, my second favorite gun that I own if not joint first with my Longthorn. It is such a wonderful thing. Yes, it's stupid. Yes, it's inefficient. Yes, a Benelli M2 would be the better choice of semi-automatic for hard work, but how many high-end boutique handmade semi-automatics are there in the world? Not enough, I tell you, not enough. A shame, something new under the sun. Mm. Yep, I love it. You can't. I mean, this is genuinely a lucky dip. Yes! Oh, how I've missed you, old girl. I should have opened that so it was unsafe gun handling. This is my Maruku. Put back into its original form. Case color hard and action, wobbly joint, and oh, cracked four. I mean, this gun's had some life through it. Of course, I can't even remember how I shot it now. This was the girl. This was the pup. This was my gun before. Excellent value, I have. Before YouTube, yeah, excellent value, Maruku. Can't beat him for the money. He doesn't miss with it. I mean, I missed the first one, but that's fine. It's funny, they all take a different bit of shooting. Can't beat full and three quarter chokes. Took a bit of remembering that, strange. I never thought, to be fair, I never thought there'd be a day where I'd just put this down and, and shot something better. I thought this would be me for life. All right, next. So I purchased this Mark 38 to make some sort of Frankenstein between the two. Again, 32 inch, someone had done me a favor and bored the chokes out already, so it was a little bit more future ready. I liked it, and then uh, didn't change it. To get older. Think I've got a problem. <laughs> yeah, I forget how quick they move. This is another Maruku, a Mark 60, no less. It took a little bit longer than I thought to uh, review it. 10 guns that I own. There's only 10, it's a long 10. Yeah, job done. Can't beat a Maruk. You can't beat him in grade five. Can't beat him for the money, that's for sure. Ta-da! Oh, the 90 minute gun challenge bet and Solly. I adopted it after bettering with it. To be honest, a lot of the things we work on just end up in the bin. I like this. Yeah, she needs a few more 90 minute sessions on her, but you know, Certainly in the UK for our American friends, this is worthless. Right, Greg? Yeah, I agree. You'd scrap it if someone brought it in. In perfect condition, almost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. Back from the brink, you'll all remember the row, the whole two hours on one bloody screw or whatever the phrase is. Given that this is probably a few years ago we did this, the stock finish we put on it has held up very well. And to be fair, the cold blue we put on the bottom has put on, held up exceptionally as well. I'm not unhappy with what we did to it. Smooth as silk. 
I spent so many hours on this. That's why we did a 90 minute challenge on the other because I didn't want to get, I don't know, probably about 20 hours into this. All right, last two. Oh yes. Oh, I haven't shot this since Willoughby Hedge. This is the uh, Holt something or other. The unnamed gun that members will know a little bit more about. Although not everything, because I don't know everything. The prototype Browning slash Italian crossover of Doom. I love this gun. Let's shoot it last. What's in here? Oh yeah, that's the Ithaca. This isn't actually proof, this needs to go to proof, so I'm not gonna shoot it. This is an Ithaca Fluez, I think. It's beautiful, I did a video on it ages ago. Never shot it, still haven't shot it, needs to go to proof. Just never sent it to the proof house, the real one. So I bought this as a thing from the sealed bid auction with no name on it whatsoever, but mate, the stock is very clearly made in England to a very high standard. The action is kind of like half browning, but half Italian. It's Italian built. The ribs are struck, uh, the actual barrels seem to be struck in a very English manner for an Italian gun with a solid tapered rib. How could you not fall in love with it other than the safety catch is pretty horrific. I remember why I love this. I could shoot the absolute ass out of this gun. It moves so well. It's just a shame that it's not particularly reliable on the trigger reset, changeover, occasionally having to push the safety on and off. And yeah, I could probably go in and fix all of it, but not knowing where it started is always a hard thing. I've toyed with the idea of getting it engraved and actually finishing it, but then it wouldn't be what it is. I don't really know what it is, but I know that I don't want it to be not what it is. I might have a problem. Some of those guns I am in love with. Some of them I just like, some of them I need in my life but some of them clearly I just don't and bring them all out and put them in one place like the man and all of the butter that he eats on a daily basis on fat fighters or whatever his sash referred to earlier that's revolting that's one bucket my insides must be really caked up well maybe some of that butter needs to go you two can join me in being a person who owns too many guns by entering Tweedle's competition it's not just this long form they do give away quite a few guns go check them out links in the description 20 quid with kind of ridiculous odds it would be rude not to. However, Sam says, I'm not allowed to win because people would think it's rigged. Best enter under somebody else's name.